Thomas and Friends is probably one of the most enduring children's shows and brands of all time, spanning over several decades with several books and a long-running show that lasts nearly 40 years on top of the more than 70-year-old railway series. Thomas and Friends has had many different toy lines over the years, some of which have come and gone and others being rebranded, but many have continued to stay relevant into the modern day. Arguably the most prolific and numerous example being the beloved wooden railway line, which has been around for the better half of 30 years. The line itself is not entirely unique, as much of the design aspects has roots within early handcrafted wood trains from the 1930s and 40s, and have since become a part of the larger wood gauge market, compared to HO or OO, with examples like Skinny Atlas Handicrafters laying the groundwork in the 30s through the 40s, where Brio and Heroes would rise in the 60s through the following decades until learning curve broke out in the 1990s. The Thomas and Friends Wooden Railway line began in 1991, being created by John W. Lee of Learning Curve with direct collaboration and approval from Brett Okoff, and overseeing the line being held by Roy Wilson. Roy Wilson would build several early prototypes using prior magazine illustrations for approval, beginning the long history of the toy line. It's also interesting to note that around the time, the American license for production of TTE toys would be held by Learning Curve as a direct response to Thomas's growing popularity during the early 1990s with Shining Time Station. Later on, the UK license would be handed over to the Swedish company Brio from 1996 before losing the license in 2001. As a result, Brio would have their own Thomas line. Brio's TTE line was much smaller and short-lived, but it's a unique variation in addition to all the other toy lines, as the engines have semi-accurate details and designs not too dissimilar for Wooden Railway, but are unique on their own. Early Wooden Railway toys are relatively simple, but were fairly detailed for the time, as many of the main characters seen from the Railway series would be accurately recreated at such a small scale. Of course, some of the major details like whistles, coupling rods, and buffer details would be omitted from the line, but much of the character's general shape, faces, and look would accurately be recreated. The prototypes themselves would be created in 1992, with Thomas's first prototype having donor parts from a loco from the German company Heroes, while a second would use a similar donor chassis and a face from the Erdl line. Eventually, early prototypes of most of the main seven characters would be recreated, with some sharing faces and or chassis. A recurring theme seen across prototypes going forward. Stickers and decals would be a recurring theme for prototypes before production went on to printing. Eventually, the line's public introduction would be in 1993, many of which, if not all, would have an early version of the iconic wheels that we all know and love, alongside custom faces recreated from the props. These early versions also had flat magnets and wood dowels for funnels and domes, also having a construction that was mostly entirely made out of wood. Early variants had stampled chassis to the bodies, and many of the wheels at this time lacked any real date production stamp, and the overall models lacked any sort of stamped names. Many of these early productions would be handmade, produced in Buffalo and Arcade, New York. Following the success of the line in its first year, production for the 1994 year would be moved to China, resulting in slight improvements on the existing designs, like the wheels having proper date and brand stamping, and overall refinement of production. This would result in a toy that was more refined and well put together than their predecessors, and the overall comparison between production years is apparent. 1994 would also introduce the iconic clickety-clack track in the yearly yearbooks for the line. The following year would introduce thicker wheels for the toy line, a design that would stick for nearly 20 years. And for the next four years, much of the engines and line would receive slight changes here and there before the new millennium. As the wooden railway was heading into the 2000s, 1999 brought forth more integration of plastic parts such as detailed smoke boxes and funnels, as well as coal loads for tender engines and further design refinements such as name stamping. Smaller changes would also appear in minor face design changes, phasing out of multiple level footplates and battery operated locos would be introduced. The design changes in new parts would be seen throughout the line from 1999 to the release of Magic Road in 2000 and into 2001. It also seems these changes would be a hint for what would become the following year, as much as this generation of toys were slowly integrating with new parts and phasing out of old designs, creating a fairly unique hybrid look between production years from 2001 to 2002. Two thousand two would be a big year for the wooden railway, as the entire line would have a revamp, with new designs for packaging, new track designs better suited for battery-operated engines, and new road designs. 
New face designs based upon current promo art at the time would also be introduced for every main character, alongside better and more advanced printing comparable to Trackmaster and or Ertl. This era would also introduce sights and sounds in 2004 with a new product variance and locations. The ramping of new productions and products would also result in a large amount of value packs and a plethora of accessories to add more variety to the toy line. Limited edition sets and exclusive engines with promos with Toys R Us would also be commonplace throughout the whole production line. And during this time, the Railway Series would celebrate its 60th anniversary with calling all engines, resulting in the release of the ever so common limited edition Thomas and Percy, as well as the canceled Toby and employee gifts of Diesel 10 and Edward, the RWS set with a unique Henry and Thomas, and the rare trio of destination story sets of Thomas Comes to Breakfast, James Goes Buzz Buzz, and A Better View for Gordon. Yeah, cancel one for Henry. All which were numbered and were unique. Around this time, we also had an explosion of adventure packs at tie-in with the show, new destinations from the show and the books, as well as characters old and new continue to vary the line going forward. The show would also incorporate new characters and new story elements, which would later be integrated within the toy line. Whether or not they were good is up for debate, but we got more Thomas toys in the end. So win-win. Various label changes and production recalls were common in this area as well as teasers for future releases would also become a staple going forward. This era would also introduce Talking Railway series, which would have incorporated engines talking through destination packs, as well as early engineer designs for younger fans. As we all know, the show would switch to full CGI in 2009. As a result, in 2011, all of the main characters within the Wooden Railway line had updated faces, and the company, Tomy, would require RC2, the parent company of Learning Curve, and a deal between Mattel and Tomy was met so that any new Wooden Railway toys produced after 2012 would be made by Fisher Price. At this time, any existing products had Tomy logos, and Tomy would not release any new toys for the line in 2012, and said, re-releasing redesigned characters and sets for the new movies coming out at the same time, and during this handover, some products would also be shelled while others were pushed out. The next few years would be what I would like to call the Dark Age, as 2011 would result in the Tomy to Fisher Price handover of the line, with Tomy rushing out products that Learning Curve were working on and canceling others. During this time, Tomy wooden railway faces would suffer from some pretty questionable face changes, which would change the following year in 2012, with faces more accurate to the show. 2013 would eventually introduce Fisher Price's ownership of the line with slight redesigns of characters with smooth designs to prevent wood tearing and chipping. Some cancelled products during the Tomy handover would be re-released, but much of the line would be a mix of Learning Curve, Tomy, and Fisher Price products. Eventually, 2014 would call for the sw full switchover as Wooden Railway presence online would be taken down and replanted to Fisher Price's website, with some exclusive characters being released such as Sam, Dustin, and Logan, a whole story on their own. The following years would have relatively uneventful as 2016 and 2017 would introduce smoothed down huh? variants of pre-existing engines and minor production changes leading up to the first reband of the line. Towards the end of 2017, a complete rebranding of the Wooden Railway would come to head with the introduction of the Thomas Wood line, which completely simplified existing designs and changed track connecting points. This micro-generation of the line had many poor decisions made as 2017 would be the last time the 2002 body style for Thomas would be used, as a new body style would be introduced in 2018. The one thing that really bothers me and presumably many fans of the line was the fact that the body was now not fully painted to show that the toy is made out of wood, as if consumers didn't know that they were made out of wood since the 1990s. Not to mention the designs continued to get simpler and simpler. The iconic eight-wheeled bogey design was axed for every character, resulting in every character being 060s for cheaper production and details like domes were seemingly non-existent. Additionally, the track of this era also were not universal to any other wooden railway gauge. As a result, everyone had to seemingly buy new tracks or adapters. Whether due to poor backlash or poor sales, 2019 would see the new body styles and designs with fully painted details albeit still a step down from the previous generation. While some engines did see better iterations, much of the line was not very good. Thomas Wood would eventually be canceled in 2021 due to low sales and universal backlash. For the time, the only wooden railway items could only really be found, at least in the US, were Barnes & Nobles and Toys R Us or Amazon, but we all know how that kind of went. 
After the shitstorm of Thomas Wood and, of course, Waba, Thomas as a brand was seemingly on life support and on the way out. With some leaks here and there about a new replacement in the pipeline, everything was up in the air. It wasn't until 2021, Fisher Price would eventually introduce the new and improved second rebrand of Thomas Wooden Railway with new and improved engine and rolling stock designs. The Wooden Railway would receive a complete makeover with new logos, packaging, new realistic designs for all main characters, and new styles of faces and wheels. This new line would be bigger and better than anything ever before. Granted, I don't really like the wheels. Due to production shortages and the pandemic, much of the line was slowly trickling into the public and in stores like Barnes & Nobles and Walmart in the US and Toys R Us in Canada. The line itself is fairly promising with new designs across the board and new to destinations. But some fairly weird design choices and inconsistencies are apparent, with buildings and characters being hybrids of the older CGI Thomas and the newer All Engine Goes reboot. Take with that what you will, the new line looks pretty promising. I think the major reason why the wooden railway is so beloved and so cool is because of how accessible the line is to all ages and how versatile it is with all destinations, accessories, and variants. With all that in mind, you could legitimately make your own Sodor and own stories without having much to think about, say electrical stuff, maintenance, or track laying. Everything was kept incredibly simple and user friendly, which arguably some things getting too simple as time went on, but due to its simplicities, we got a whole metric variety of different engines covering almost every season of the show, every single book, alongside limited edition collectibles and unique varieties across different stores and events, and even countries. And I think the legacy is still very much in the mind of the fans who grew up with the line and is still seen today with the new wooden railway line as unique faces and variations have popped up for a day out with Thomas events and destination packs. Overall, I think this line is really, really cool, and I think really holds dear to my own heart, and I think is really interesting. Um, not to mention that earlier this year, me and my friends decided to whip out some of the railway toys that we had when we were kids, and me being a Thomas fan and everyone else not being Thomas fans, it was very interesting to see a bunch of 20-year-olds play with tracks on the wooden railway toys just out in someone's living room. It was probably the funniest thing I did all year. But overall, I really like this toy line. I think it's really interesting and I hope you guys like the video. Anyways, that's all I got. As we all know, the show would switch to full CGI in 2009. 